Hey there, what's going on everybody? Thank you for joining us today on Jose's Opinion. Today we'll explain a recap on a 2009 Swiss science fiction film called Space Transport. Before we start don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel, spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. In the middle of the 23rd century, the Earth had entered the stage of total collapse. Wars and infectious diseases devastated the beautiful blue planet, and human beings are forced to leave their homes for survival and live on the crowded space station 30 orbiting the Earth. And some of the rich are already migrate to other planets. The sister of Laura Portman, a young female doctor, won a visa to visit, Rhea, seven years ago. It is said that there is a paradise, the green waves rippling, fresh air, everyone yearned for. To join her sister there, Laura needs a lot of money to travel to Rhea. To that end, Laura signed up with Cable Kuiper to work as a doctor on an aging building materials cargo ship, the Cassandra, to Space Station 42, which is being expanded into a transportation hub, for eight years. And then she will get enough money to get to Rhea's colonies. Laura boarded the freighter with high hopes and met the entire crew, including Captain Croy, a total of seven people. As Brooks rebels are making frequent and large-scale attacks on the station, the government sent a security commander, Lt. Samuel Decker, with the ship to Station 42 to ensure the ship's safety. Because the flight is so long, everyone on board took turns coming out of hibernation to watch, even though the autopilot is cruising. And just like that, everyone went into cryogenic hibernation. Three years and eight months later, Laura is awakened to watch. She had texted her sister before boarding the ship. According to Space City's transmission time, she is not supposed to hear back from her sister for four years, but this time she received the message early. Unaware of any problems, Laura casually sent her sister another video. One day, when she is recording the instrument data in front of the equipment, she suddenly felt a strange figure passing quietly behind her. With the sound of the bottom of the ship pounding, she subdued her fear and went to the warehouse. Sure enough, as soon as she got near the door of the warehouse, she put her hand on it and felt a huge object hit her from inside. She instinctively tried to escape, but on the way she encountered Decker, who was supposed to be asleep. Decker told her that he had discovered that the air lock in the cargo hold had somehow been opened, so he is automatically woken up by the program. Laura tells Decker that she did not open the air lock, the ship should wake up the captain in time for such an accident, but Decker stopped. Laura, sensing something very strange, insisted on waking the captain. To ascertain the situation, the captain opens the door of the warehouse in the first place. It is extremely cold. There is a- This brings suspicion to Laura. To ensure the safety of the cargo ship, the captain takes Laura and Decker into the inventory area to check. In order to save time, the captain assigns an area for everyone. Laura suggests that the captain act together but the captain did not accept the advice, resulting in a tragedy soon happened. As the they split up to check, Laura sees the captain fall rapidly from the height of the hold, to the very bottom, with a cry of despair piercing the air. When Laura and Decker rushes to check, the captain is dying, and the airlock issues a close alarm, they can only bring captain back out of the cargo hold for rescue. However, the captain is not come to life, Laura has to wake up the first flight officer Lindenberg took over the cargo ship, she logs in the security system, after repeats verification found that the airlock will open without reason is due to the cargo ship system error, which also clears Laura of suspicion. Engineers Vispish and Bakoff and computer systems administrator Miyuki Yoshida are summoned to fix the flight system as quickly as possible. In order to figure out the cause of the captain's death, Laura gives the captain an autopsy, again confirmed the fact of falling dead, at the same time, Laura found an implanted camera in the captain's eyes, Laura is very curious, after entering the camera found a video captain saw the picture, there are some biochemical products seen, that means the ship isn't carrying so-called building materials, so what exactly is in the warehouse right now? To make sure, Laura and Decker find the container containing the biochemicals and use the captain's ID to open the door. To their surprise, there are no biological products in the warehouse. Instead, there are small sleeping chamber, each containing sleeping people. Decker hurriedly summoned Vispish and Bakov to help carry one of them back to the lab for examination. However, the container suddenly starts to move, and Laura, who is walking last, is nearly pushed out of the container and falls to her death, but Decker appears in time to save her. 
Back in the infirmary, Lindenberg dosed show any surprise. This dubious explanation further fuels Laura's determination to seek the truth. She asks to inspect the dormant chambers. Lindenberg initially refuses to agree, but Decker supports Laura and asks Lindenberg to authorize it in his official capacity. Lindenberg becomes suspicious of Decker's identity and asks Yoshida to pull up all of his files. However, Decker's files are too secret for the system to read. When Decker accompanies Laura on her Dorkbin examination, he discovers that one of the girls has been implanted with a virtual reality connector, which is extremely damaging to the nervous system and has been in use for a long time. Laura tries her best to save the little girl, but became suspicious when the video she sent to her sister take less than half an hour to receive a reply, which is a big violation of the previous response time rule. Laura fidgets and went to Decker with questions. Decker does not answer her question, and there seemed to be some truth behind the silence. Decker expresses his unwillingness to cheat on Laura with a kiss, whereas Laura falls in love with Decker during the experience. Soon after, Lindenberg summons the crew to claim that Yoshida had tested import and export information and discovered that someone had maliciously tampered with the freezer files. She discovers that Decker has woken up from hibernation several times long before, and Decker tells Laura that the cargo ship is not actually bound for Space Station 42, but for Rhea Colony Rhea, before being forced into cryogenic hibernation. Already suspicious of Laura, secretly please Yoshida help query spacecraft destination. That night, Yoshida login host check database, the coordinates of the spaceship cannot be changed after takeoff, although the destination coordinates are restricted login, but that place is certainly not space station. Laura thinks of her sister back to the message faster, she feels Deckard did not cheat her, now the spaceship has slowly approached in Rhea. Yoshida? Yoshida is found dead in his room the next day, and Decker is nowhere to be found. As Decker is unable to revive himself under Lindenberg's close watch, there must be someone lurking behind him. Decker's suspicions grew suddenly, and his purpose seemed to become very clear. He and his shadowy accomplices helped the group of stowaways from the freezer to the new migrant planet. Lindenberg splits the crew into two teams and sweeps the ship. Laura and Vispish are searching the deck when they hear a movement. Sapachi thinks Decker is inside, so he and Laura fight on both sides. He draws attention from the front, and Laura attacks from behind. As Laura climbs down the deck, she is attacked by stowaways. Fortunately, someone in the dark fires a shot, saving Laura's life. Laura found several photos in the dead stowaway luggage, the photos of the people of holding fruit and vegetables, this is the rebel leader Brooke. From a video, Brooke and Decker find that the earth has recovered, plants are edible, water is drinkable, and people can live on earth again. In order to make huge profits, Interstellar Corporation kept everyone in the dark and continued to transport batches of human immigrants into space. That's when Vespucci goes to Laura and claims to have Decker. They kicked and punched Decker and asked him what the purpose of the rebellion is? Laura is kept by Lindenberg. She knows that Laura is a clever woman, and now that everything has been laid bare, she should go public. She tells Laura that the space immigration program actually failed at the beginning, and the company can't find a planet suitable for human survival, so it can only deceive the world with the holographic home game. However, Rhea's ecosystem creation is perfect, and people inside the Rhea will only feel like they are living in a reality rather than a simulator. Lindenbaugh told Laura this not to persuade her, but in the hope that she would know which path is wiser. Vispush and Bokov do not kill Decker when they learn that the destination is Rhea. They have been looking forward to a new life on the migrant planet. This news brings hope to the impoverished too, who backhand over power Lindenberg and put her into forced hibernation. Laura in the treatment of the little girl, Decker in the side with her to apologize and promise to help her rescue sister, Decker has thought about the plan after the spaceship arrived at the destination will stay in the space station for half an hour or so, he and Laura during this period into the space station, find Rhea hardware module, then let Laura with a holographic head into Rhea, from the inside to send a message, inform all human, expose the deception of Star Migration Corporation. Decker goes to find Laura's sister's freezing chamber, and then they meet and blew up the transceiver of the main antenna, so that although Rhea can continue to run, the people living in the simulator cannot contact the outside world, the plot of the interstellar company will be completely dismantled.
On the way to their destination, Laura and Decker's relationship heats up. The spacecraft arrived at the destination, they delay the unloading time to half an hour, Decker first step into the space station put on the aviation suit, and that they take the opportunity to take the Lindenberg documents, open the container, place dormant cabinet, they do not have the ability to pay RIA immigration costs, want to take the opportunity to lie in the dormant cabinet is put into RIA when unloading. To prevent Decker from stopping them, they change the unloading time to 10 minutes later, when Laura's suit's fuel cells fail and Decker tells her to stay put. Laura stubborn insists to leave the spaceship into the space station, did not expect just out of the spaceship, because there is no power to float in space, quickly call Decker. Decker just installed the bomb at this time, still find Laura's sister in many dormant cabinet, but the other side many years ago Rhea immigration has been unable to wake up. He hears Laura's cry for help, quickly arrives and takes Laura to Rhea's hardware module, allowing him to use all the equipment into Rhea. Surprised to find that the ship began to unload in advance, Decker comfort Laura things are still in control, after all, unloading also need time. So Laura entered Rhea at ease, which is indeed as her sister told her, with birds and flowers and a quiet environment. However, her primary purpose is to find her sister, say goodbye to her, and send a message to human beings, telling them that the interstellar company is a hoax and the earth can be inhabited again. Decker in order to protect Laura, will own aviation suit fuel gave her, when Laura finished everything from Rhea back to the body, found Decker has drifted further and further away, aviation suit remaining fuel is not enough to support two people back to the spaceship, the spaceship has been unloaded at this time, about to leave the space station, Laura with Decker hope, struggling to catch up with the spaceship. The main antenna of Rhea in the space station is blown up. Before Laura boarded the spaceship and felt sad, she found that the little girl who was being treated is gone and Lindenberg woke up from hibernation. Lindenberg rushes over to kill Laura, and while fighting, who was accidentally locked out of the cabin. Fortunately, she did not hurt the little girl, and Laura took the little girl back to Earth. Years later, the message sent by Laura from Rhea has been received by all people living in space stations. The interstellar company hoax is known to the world that people living in space city and drifting in the universe can finally return to the blue home, and the plot of space transportation in the movie is over. That's the end of the story, please turn on notifications and leave a like, it really helps the channel out, thank you for watching.